Good evening to you. We're continuing in our study of Daniel 9. The Lord uh, laid this on our hearts several weeks ago. And we're on the fourth message in this study of Daniel 9. Uh, you know, I, I don't I know that prayer is important, but the Lord just knew how much we needed prayer and just how important it was. And uh, we've just been studying Daniel's prayer in Daniel 9. We opened up with the first message a few weeks back and, and, and how Daniel 9 starts out and how he addresses God and he addresses God as his righteousness and, and just how he was my God. And he said he was a dreadful God and a faithful God and a merciful God. And you know, just how important is it to know who we're praying to and, and just how important it is to know that God can do something about our situation and just who, who we are praying to. And that's that first message that we had. And then in Daniel 9, the second message that we had, we talked about how Daniel started addressing his sin and the sins of the people. And he said that it was, number one, they had sin and they had missed the mark, that they had transgressed against God. That was the second one. Then he said, number three, that they had fell into wickedness. And then that number four, rebellion. And then number five, refusal to hear. You can see a progression of that sin. And Daniel was really all the way down for all the way from sin to refusing to hear God and not listening to God. He addressed all of those sins in, in our second study. So he goes directly from uh, addressing God and who God is then addressing his own sins. But then last week in Daniel 9 we talked about how uh, and how relevant it was really to, to today and to the worst world that we live, but how that confusion belongs to us. And Daniel said that he was confused and, 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 and it belonged to God's people. And they, they, they're getting what they deserved by being confused. But, but maybe confusion does belong to us, but he said that Daniel said, mercy, forgiveness belongs to the Lord. And then the third thing we said last week is we just need to listen and obey God. And that's certainly what we need to do in this hour that we live. And we're just going to kind of teach through Daniel 9. Begin at verse number 11 this, this, this evening. Uh, and we'll open up in prayer. I hope everyone's uh, doing well. Again, it's, it's unusual to be preaching and speaking at, a, at, a, at an empty church. But we're just doing what the just uh, getting the gospel out and just trying to be a blessing and try to be an encouragement to you. Um, but uh, we'll open up in prayer to Heavenly Father. Lord, I thank you for who you are and I thank you for what you've done. Lord, I thank you that you're still on the throne, Lord, and you're still able. You know, situations may change and times may change, Lord, but you're still God and you've not wavered, you've not changed a bit. And Lord, we just forgive us for where we failed you, forgive us where we've come short. But Lord, we love you. And we praise you for who you are. Just be with us through this study of Daniel uh, 9 and this prayer. And just be with us and just uh, put my, uh, my weaknesses to the side and, and all my failures. But, and just use me and let me be a willing vessel and help the people in Jesus' name. Amen. But again, we'll pick up at verse number 11. And verse number 11 says this. It says, Yea, all of Israel have transgressed thy law even by departing that they might not obey thy voice. Therefore the curse is poured upon us, and the oath that is written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, because we have sinned against them. See, Daniel here, he, he's not only, he, he's saying that we've not only disregarded God's words, but he's saying that all of Israel, in verse number 11, he says all of Israel has transgressed the, against thy law. And, you know, we can relate to these statements of Daniel. You know, a lot of these verses that we're going to get ready to share, you can relate to the day that we're living, and you can relate to, 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 to you know, things going on here in the U.S. But not only has Christians fallen away from God. See, Daniel says uh, he admitted his own sins, and he puts himself right with the people. But he, not only has Christians fallen away from God, but the home has fallen away from God. Not only the home, but the church and then you got the county, the state, the nation. And, and, you know, little by little, we've fallen away from the God and, and the direction that he, that he wanted us to go in. And Daniel here is pouring his heart out to God in verse number 11. And he's saying that Israel has transgressed thy laws, what verse number 11 says. And it says, therefore, the curse is poured upon us. 
You know, he's not arguing that, or he's not, uh, he's admitting, hey, that curse should be poured upon us because of our actions and the way that we've lived. And, you know, we can learn something, that transgressions, they affect us. And, you know, the, the transgressions that we've faced and the things that we've done should affect us because they've affected God. And, you know, if they affect God, they ought to affect us. You know, how upset are we over our transgressions? You know, does it bother us that we have transgressed against God? Or is it just to the point that, uh, you know, it don't really affect, until it affects us, until it affects our own lives, it's not a big deal. You know, I see, it seems like that's a lot of times how we live. We wait until things get out of control, and we wait until uh, God's really got our attention, then the transgressions, like, oh gosh, I have transgressed, I have fallen short. I have sinned, and, and we wait till it gets to the that, that boiling point, that tipping point, before it really gets our attention. But that Daniel here is he's admitting that transgression. Not only that he had transgressed, it says all of Israel they transgressed against uh, God's law. Verse number twelve says this: It says, and he hath confirmed his words which he spake against us and against our judges that judged us by bringing upon us great evil. For under the whole heaven hath not, not been done as hath been done upon Jerusalem. Daniel's saying God has done what he's promised he would do if we departed. In other words, there will be judgment. There will be consequences for departing from God's law and, 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 and drifting away from God and transgression, transgressing against God. There will be uh, a judgment. There will be, or, or, there will be uh, consequences to doing that. And you know, we said this before. You know, uh, God is gracious and He's merciful. He's slow to anger. He's 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 just a loving God. But you know, God cannot be righteous without uh, getting our attention. He cannot be just righteous and holy without having some judgment and and consequences to our actions. You know, if He just lets us live how we want. You let your children live how they want. Uh, that's not being a good father. And it's not uh, not uh, being the, the parent that we should be. But verse number 12 says, And he spake against us and against the judges that judged us and bringing upon us a great evil. And it's a great evil. And it says, For under the whole heaven hath not been done that has been done upon Jerusalem. And see, Daniel's saying, Under the whole heaven, under, uh, under on, on this whole earth, nothing's been done to Jerusalem like it's being done right now. Verse number 13 says, And as it is written in the law of Moses, all this evil has come upon us, yet may we not our prayer before the Lord our God, that we might turn from our iniquities and understand thy truth. Daniel's saying all this evil has come upon us and, we, and we've not even made a prayer before the Lord. Uh, we, we've got all this evil on us and, and we've not realized that, 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 that it's all a consequence, it's all a judgment from God. And Daniel's saying that we knew God's words. He had confirmed his words. We knew them. And he says in verse 13 to begin, as it is written in the law of Moses, we, we knew the law. And, and Moses had warned them, if you drift from that law and you depart from that law, uh, there's going to be consequences. And, and, and if you don't repent from, from and turn from those wicked ways. But it says in, in verse number 13, it says, uh, before our Lord our God, that we might have turned from our iniquities and understand Thy truth. I mean, how relevant today that we that we we have to turn from our wicked ways. We have to turn from that our iniquity. You know, in our wealth of knowledge. I mean, we have a wealth of knowledge. There is no way not to know the gospel or get to preaching and 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 and, and get the Bible. I mean, on a cell phone, on the, with the internet. Just here in the U.S., we, we know what's right. We know what's wrong. You know, it says in the Bible that the, God's law is written on our heart. We, we, in other words, we, how relevant today that we knew the law, we broke the law, and we didn't pray to God and, and, and get forgiveness for breaking and transgressing against that law. You know, it seems like when things break out like they have here, here in the, across the whole world, 
uh, you know, we'll turn for a remedy, or we'll turn for a vaccine, or we'll turn for a quick uh, fix. But, you know, we really need to turn to God and realize that we have broken his law and turn to him in prayer and realize it's our iniquities and, and, and breaking that law that's got us to where, where we're at. Verse number 14 says, And therefore hath the Lord watched upon the evil and brought it upon us. For the Lord our God is righteous in all his works, and he that do, doeth, for we obey not we obeyed not his voice. See, as a result of, of, of hearing and, and knowing the law, as a result of hearing that and knowing it, but just not doing it, calamity has descended upon the people. That's what Daniel's saying. He says that therefore hath the Lord watched upon them and brought and brought and watched upon the evil and brought it upon us. See, watched here means he has alerted to our evil. The fact that he's watched upon our evil means that he's watched for the perfect opportunities to bring calamities upon us. In other words, God's watched. God's been gracious. God's been merciful. God's been slow to anger. And he's watched. And he's been patient. But it, and, and, and you know this, what, the, what the verse 14 says, In all ways the Lord is righteous. Even in his judgment he's righteous. And he's right because of his judgment. But Israel had disobeyed the voice of the Lord and they had uh, disobeyed the Lord and his law and there goes that, those calamities upon the people. When you think about the United States of America, you think about this world, how much can we relate to what's going on in verse number 14? I mean, how real and how alive is this book that, that we just happen to be studying this verse and with all the things going on in the world? I mean, how, how God can bring judgment upon us. I mean, how of a perfect opportunity to see calamities the way they are. You know, he, God knows how to get our attention. God knows how to, to rattle our cage and, and, and wake us up. I mean, how perfect of an opportunity than the things that is going on right now. I mean, you think about it. No March Madness. I mean, that's a calamity enough. I love basketball. There's no, no March Madness. No sports, no entertainment. You know, work for many people shut down. Restaurants shut down. Our economy slowing down. I mean, God knows the calamities it takes to get our attention. And you better believe that it's not. It's, he's righteous in his judgment. And he knows how to, to get our attention. And, and God knows everything. And he knows how to get our attention. And he knows all these changes. He knew how this virus would affect the world. And he, knew, he knows everything. And he knows exactly what it takes to get mine and your attention. And that's what he's done. He's done a great job of it. And God's, even in his judgment, God is righteous. What a God he is. It says in, there, in verse 14, Therefore hath the Lord watched upon the evil and brought it upon us. You think about your own personal life. He knows how to get our attention that way too. I mean, things will happen sometimes in our own personal life. And he just knows how to get our attention. And, 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 and the reason that he's getting our attention is, again, we have sinned and we have turned from, from uh, what's right. We've not obeyed the laws and we're just living in a, in a state of wickedness and transgression. And I'll tell you, folks, if, if that's where we're at and if that's where we're at as a Christian, God will get your attention. He has to. That's what the Bible says. And, and, and even on a personal level, how scary is it to think that it has to get to that point for him to get our attention? I mean, my, how we just need to get tuned up to God. How we need to just get in tune with him and be careful about our relationship and be careful about our transgressions and just stay really just in tune with God. I mean, just be careful. Be in sync with him. Because he knows how to get our attentions, even on a personal level. But verse number 14 says, For the Lord our God is righteous in all his works. I mean, it's because of his righteousness that he, he, can, he cannot let evil be permanent. He cannot let evil prevail in our life. If the Holy Ghost has moved in and made residence in our hearts, he just cannot let evil be, prevail. I mean, we, we are lights in this world, and, and we're an example for, for Christ. And he just cannot let and permit that evil 
to, to continue. See that in verse number 14. And God, God is a good God. He's a holy God. And that's why he just can't allow that to just continue. Verse number 15 says, And now, O Lord our God, that hast brought thy people forth out of the land of Egypt with a mighty hand, hast gotten thee renowned as this day. We have sinned and we have done wickedly. See, Daniel recalls here in verse number 15 how God had brought his people out of Egypt. And he, he, he's reminded that God has a mighty hand. And it was a mighty hand that brought them up out of Egypt. And I want you to say this, God is still that God. God is still that God that's able. God's still that God. It's still that same mighty hand that, that lifted us up out of bondage, that lifted us and saved us. It's still that mighty hand that's a, got a hand of protection on us. It's really causing all the chaos to break loose. He's still got that mighty hand. That same God that while we were yet sinners loved us, he still loves us and he's still got that mighty hand. And in verse number 15 says, again, it says at the end there, we have sinned and we have done wickedly. Because he loves us and because we are his, we're going through what we're going through. I truly believe that. And I mean, that's what Daniel's saying too. He's, he's confessing in prayer and he sees... Israel the way they are and he says hey we we're facing this and, and, and it's because that the, the city of Jerusalem is is uh, turning their back on you and they, they fell into sin and fell into wickedness and, and it's because we have done wickedly and that's what Daniel is saying verse number 16 says O Lord according to all thy righteousness I beseech you let thy anger and thy fury be turned away from that city Jerusalem the holy mountain because our sins and for that iniquity of our fathers Jerusalem and the people are become a reproach to all that are about us verse 17 and, and now therefore O God hear the prayer of thy servant and his supplications and cause thy face to shine upon the sanctuary that is desolate for the Lord's sake O my God incline th thine ear and hear Open thine eyes and behold our desolations and the city which is called by my name. For we do not present our supplications before thee for our, our righteousness, but for thy great mercies. We see Daniel here is making a petition and he's making a plea here before God. And in, in verse number 16, he says, O Lord, according to all thy righteousness, Lord, according to all the righteousness that you have, I'm coming before you. And he's saying, God, you've helped the people because of your righteousness. And, and, and it's not because of, of, of their righteousness. It's because of your righteousness. And we need to get that clear. It's, it's all God's righteousness. Our righteousness is nothing. We're, we're, we could never be good enough. We could never be holy enough. It's because of God's righteousness. But he says here in that verse, he says that God has heard their groaning before. He's heard their groaning before. Well, Exodus 2 and 23 says this, and it came to pass. It's Exodus 2, 23. And it came to pass in the process of time that the king of Egypt died and the, and, and the children of Israel sighed by reason of bondage. And they cried, their cry came up unto God by reason of bondage. And God heard their groaning. See, God heard their groaning before. He says, God heard their groaning, and God remembered his covenant with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. And God looked upon the children of Israel, and God had respect unto them. See, the thing that God that got God's attention was their groaning. Think, let that sink in a minute. It was their groaning that got his attention. In other words, God saw their misery. God saw that, that, that he saw what they were going to and going through, and he remembered their mercy. And he remembered just, just, uh, just what a gracious and a merciful God that, that he is. But you know, we got to turn to him, and we got to realize that, that God is our only answer. It, it didn't end it, it, in a vaccine, or it didn't end uh, anything but God. And God is, is the answer right now in this day that we live. We just need to turn to him. And, and, and he needs to hear those groans because God is a merciful, and he's a gracious, and he's a holy God. Psalm 136 and verse number 1 says, O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endureth forever. 
Time and time again, his mercy is going to endure. You know, I might not feel like his mercy is enduring, but it's not up to me to uh, decide if his mercy is enduring. It says God's mercy endures forever. Psalm 100, verse number 5 says, For the Lord is good, and his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth for all generations. You have to realize, if God's, God's uh, holiness and God's mercy was good enough in Exodus for those children of Israel, and it and endures for every, every generation, then God's mercy, is he's still got that same mercy in this generation. It endures to all generations. It's everlasting to every generation. And that's a, that's a fact. It says that in the Bible. So we don't have to hope God's going to have mercy on what we're going through. We don't have to uh, think maybe that God will have mercy. It says it's through all generations that God will have mercy. Why? Because his mercy endures forever to all generations. All the way up to this point that we're in, he still has mercy. And I'll tell you, in 2020, we, it's the generation that needs mercy, and it's still everlasting. And man, what a comfort that truly is to know that he's still merciful. He's still that, that good God. Now, verse number 19, and, and this, we'll be closing here with this verse. It says, O Lord, hear. O Lord, forgive. O Lord, hearken and do. Defer not for thine own sake, my, my people, my, or my God, for thy city and thy people are called by thy name. This is Daniel's final plea. And here he is, he's asking God to hear. I mean, he's done laid out the prayer. He's done addressed God for who he is. He's confessed his sins. He, he's made his case and made his plea. And this is Daniel's final plea, and he's wanting God to hear him. And he, he's saying that nothing good is resting on Israel. It's all resting on God and who he is. And, he's, he, he's, and, he, and don't forget this. Daniel is placing himself right in the middle of this situation. He says, there's nothing good. But God, I need you to hear me. I need you to come through. And man, what a, what a thought that is. That we just need to turn to him. And, and, and he needs to let us have, have that ear. And, and, and his, the mercies and forgiveness, it, it all belongs to him. And he says, oh, uh, hear, hearken, Lord. But I want to end with these three thoughts here. We, we point fingers a lot of times when it comes to sin. And we need to realize that we need to be included in the sin. You know, you probably, you, I know you've heard the saying, when you point your finger at someone, you have three more pointing back, fingers pointing back to you. And, that, and isn't that the case? And, you know, we can learn that in this prayer of Daniel, that we don't need to say that the, that the world's going through what it is because I've not done anything wrong. We need to put ourselves right in the middle of it. And I think if, if, if us as Christians would, would realize that and, and we would focus in on that and, 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 and hone in on that in our prayers and in our prayer life, man, my, God might just give us an ear and he might just hear what, what we're having to say. But that's the problem a lot of times. That, that we like to, Christians like to single themselves out and act like, well, it's just the world. We didn't do nothing. But you know, we point fingers and we need to be included right in the middle of what's taking place. We've got to quit taking ourselves out of the equation. We, we, we should, we're right in the middle of it. But number two, we categorize sin. And you have to realize sin is sin. There, there's no categories to sin. Uh, you know, we've forgotten that the sin of this lost and dying world is no different than the sins that we commit on a daily basis as Christians. The murders and the hatred and the, the, the celebrating evil that, that takes place in this world, that is no different. It's all a transgression against God. And we just need to quit, quit categorizing sin. And I, you can learn that from what we've studied here in Daniel 9. You know, as a child of God, let us never forget God's name is at stake. His name is at stake in everything that we do, how we live and how we go about our business, everything we say and do, his name is at stake. 
And, and Daniel here, he's deeply concerned about the name of God and the glory of God. And I tell you, in 2020, we just need to think about that as, as Christians. You know, how we handle this situation and how we are still the lights of this world. It, 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 we, we are representing God, but it says, uh, but sin is still sin. And, and you know, all, uh, there's no categories to it. But the last thought here I, I see in Daniel 9 is we need to remember the genuine confession of all sins. Daniel went through that list of sins there in our second study of Daniel 9. And he, he just went through the list one at a time and went through every sin. And you've got to realize God knows your heart. He knows everything about you. He knows the things you confess. He knows the things you don't confess. And I like the, uh, the illustration I've already shared a few weeks ago in the J. Vernon McGee commentary. And he was saying that when we pray to God and our prayer goes out to God, it ought to be like going to the grocery store for your wife. And you take that list and you go down that list and every single detail you get. And, I mean, everything on that list you've got to get. And it's going to be consequences. You go through that list thoroughly. And when we face God and when we get turned to God in prayer and we start, it isn't good enough to just say, God, I've sinned. God, I've come short. I really believe we need to go as detailed as Daniel has went in, in this text and go through specific sins and just confess to God because God already knows. He already knows what we're going through. I mean, it's not good enough to say I've sinned, but tell him exactly. And let's get our hearts right. And as a church, and as a nation, as a home, as an individual, we'll start getting right with God. And truly, that's what this is all about. It's just getting right with him and be as genuine as we possibly can. We just need to be more genuine, more genuine to God and be real with him. Be as real to God as really we've ever been. We're going through what we're going through, and this calamity that's taking place is not caught God by surprise. It's caught us by surprise because it's affecting our everyday life. It's affecting us uh, to a point to where our day-to-day our, our -day walk has changed. And, and, and that is not a coincidence. That has happened because God's divine power, and, and, and he's trying to get our attention. And I believe he's already caught uh, a lot of people's attention already. But I'll tell you, we'll just keep turning to him in prayer. and We just keep uh, drawing closer to him. My, what a revival that might come out of all of this situation that we're going through. There's, uh, the Bible does say this, that all things are working together for good. And I'll tell you this, I, I've not lost hope that this is the end of all generations or anything like that. Uh, everything's working together for some good. And there's going to be some good come out of this. We just need to keep praying. We need to get closer to him and just uh, just, uh, just be genuine with God. Be real with him, just as Daniel was real to him here in, in Daniel 9. And surely I have enjoyed these studies of Daniel 9. I have really got a lot out of it. And, I, I, and really the, the real thing that amazes me is just how relevant this text is. I mean, how alive the Bible is in this day that we live. And it just how the, the, the things that Daniel's confessing are things that we're that was happening to us on a daily basis. And how God got Israel's attention, and he's still getting our attention. And he's still righteous, he's still holy, and man is still falling short. But man, how real Daniel 9 is to us. But I appreciate you tuning in. I appreciate you listening uh, to the, this study. We hope to come back on a Sunday morning. We'll close in prayer, and we do appreciate you. We love you, dear Heavenly Father. Lord, we love you, and we thank you for who you are, Lord. And I thank you for just how gracious and holy that you truly are. Lord, I'm, I, I'm not even worthy to be bowing my head and coming before you. But, Lord, you just uh, made, made, a, made a, that plea through your, the blood of your son Jesus and, and that interceder. And I thank you, Lord, for those intercessions that's made on a daily basis, Lord. And, Lord, how I just need your mercy and how I need your forgiveness. And, my, Lord, how I've fallen short in my own life, my own personal life, in my home. Lord, how I just need to draw closer to you in these days. It seems like this world is slowing down. This world is just getting more still. And, man, how we just need to get closer to you in those days. Lord, you've got our attention. 
And Lord, just let us just be as real with you as we possibly can. And just know that you are righteous. You are holy. And there ain't nothing caught you off guard. And if it's called us off guard. But Lord, uh, you, everything is working for some good. Lord, we love you and we praise you. And Lord, we thank you for laying this uh, book of Daniel, Daniel on our heart and this chapter 9 uh, a few weeks ago. And my, how you knew exactly what we needed when we needed it. Lord, you're, you're as real as you've ever been. And Lord, we love you. We're just going to hold on to you. In Jesus' name, amen.